full results. Uh, I will go through now the main results of the study. Uh, so the second slide, the objectives of the study. Uh, so um, the main objective was to identify who is using ICT tools in Lebanon and water management and agriculture, but with a better focus on water management. Uh, at the level of public institutions, private sector, NGOs, and uh, users, so farmers. So we wanted to uh, understand the constraints and the needs in terms of financial capability, policy, know-how, usefulness, and also management and governance aspects. Uh, this uh, allowed us to draw policy lessons and recommendations for public institutions, NGOs, and private sector. So not only for this project, but also for people who are interested to work, work in the sector. Um, in the project, this allowed us to identify a specific technological solution to de develop in the next phase of the project. So uh, this is the case of the upgrade of uh, Laria and also identify uh, some specific capacity building material. Uh, the methodology we used, next slide. So to be able uh, to respond uh, to the questions uh, we asked ourselves, uh, there were two phases. First, uh, the literature review. So we looked at what, what was available uh, in the literature uh, concerning Lebanon. And we did two main surveys, one at the level, level of uh, the national institutions, public ones, NGOs, private sector, and academia. And the second su survey at the level of farmers in the Beka Valley. So we had a sample of around 40 farmers. Um, and we did the sampling in a way to uh, represent uh, the different water users in the Beka, the different farm size, uh, types of crops and water use. I will um, explain this uh, further in the second part. Uh, so now I will be uh, explaining uh, the main result of the survey with organizations. Uh, we interviewed uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Lebanese Agricultural Research Institute, LARI, the Litani River Authority, the CNRS, uh, the universities, we only uh, interviewed the Beirut Arab University. Uh, in the private sector, we interviewed uh, employees in uh, Alpha Telecom Company, the IoT department, uh, Agritech, which is a startup. Uh, company uh, specialized, uh, dedicated to the promoting technologies in agriculture, uh, and two uh, NGOs, Arc-en-Ciel and uh, LRI, uh, identified to be also working on such tools. Uh, so uh, you can see the in the annex of the study the interviews, the, the questionnaires we had. Uh, I'm going to highlight the main results now. Uh, so uh, what we found is that there are uh, several interesting initiatives, uh, both at the level of uh, public administration uh, and private, private sectors and NGOs. So this was found as a positive result. Um, expertise is available uh, both uh, also uh, at the level of public administration, such, such as LARI and the CNRS, um, uh, NGOs and research uh, universities, and the private sector, of course, in Lebanon was found to be uh, well equipped in terms of uh, expertise uh, and tools. Uh, we found that many projects were uh, involved in this. The, the donors and the NGOs were interested to invest and many cooperation between uh, these different stakeholders. So these, was, these were the positive results. Um, but we found as a 
Sorry, Amgad, can you go back uh, to the previous one? Uh, so, but the the obstacles we found that there that there were uh, not a very strong buy-in from public administrations and farmers uh, from these uh, of these uh, initiatives. Uh, the main obstacles was that. The public administrations were underfunded and understaffed, and there were public and that there were problems in communication and coordination uh, at at many instances. Uh, the solutions were found to be very sophisticated and interesting at the technical level, but not so adapted to the real needs. Uh, the telecom uh, telecom companies did not really. Uh, were not re really aware of how the uh, agricultural sector uh, function. And uh, one uh, big obstacle was the very high cost of the internet uh, in Lebanon. Uh, so it's one of the highest co costs uh, in the world. So I'm going to give you now a few examples that uh, we saw and that enabled us to have these conclusions. Uh, first, uh, an, an interesting uh, initiative uh, uh, led by the CNRS and the Ministry of Economy to monitor uh, farmers uh, that uh, plant wheat and ask for, ask for subsidies from the government. So this allowed the Ministry of Economy through uh, a satellite imagery monitoring by the CNRS to know exactly who were the farmers who are truly planting wheat so that they uh, pay the money for them and not for the others who uh, usually claim uh, that they are, that they they have to receive subsidies but just on papers so this was a very good uh, example that we saw that enabled the ministry of economy to to make uh, a lot of benefits to limit uh, the the losses the second project uh, between the Litani River Authority and uh, the LRBMS project, they did a crop classification on the upper Litani River Basin and uh, uh, it allowed them uh, to have a, a specific, uh, to, to improve the water balance, the under, understanding of the water balance on this uh, river basin. Uh, another example, uh, the LRI, Lebanese Reforestation Initiative, uh, they're doing a lot of uh, good mapping uh, exercises to map forests and hiking trails and uh, land cover, land use maps to be able to identify where and what to, to plant in terms of uh, forestry. Uh, now I'm going to give you some examples that uh, still need uh, improvement or that, that show the obstacles that can be encountered. So on the next slide. Uh, the Litani River Authority installed different uh, water monitoring uh, devices remote, remotely sensed. So very sophisticated and in principle, uh, very helpful to, to uh, improve water monitoring. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we saw that the, the problem was that they didn't have the capacity to maintain them. Um, Arc-en-Ciel uh, worked on a very interesting and sophisticated uh, um, uh, a smart irrigation system, but it proved that it was too complex to be practical and affordable for farmers. That uh, many farmers uh, use it, but um, it's not really helpful to them and their daily practices, and this is why we, we chose to, to upgrade it. So uh, now uh, we will move to the survey with farmers. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, another, um, another example, two other examples. Uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, we saw that uh, uh, in different uh, projects, uh, notably one funded by FAO, they tried to implement a data sharing system uh, that had to centralize data and uh, favor exchange between departments. But uh, 
uh, currently it's left unused mainly because of uh, not a lot of efforts were were maintained were like sustained in terms of maintaining it and ex like uh, uh, staying uh, in, in communication with each other. And finally, uh, farmers in the Beka they were uh, offered tensiometers, digital tensiometers, to um, um, use them to help to help them take decisions in irrigation. Uh, but also, these were not uh, used uh, more than uh, the framework of the project because they were not. Uh, really uh, perceived to be useful uh, by the farmers. So these are the examples that we can, we based our conclusions on. Uh, now, uh, at the farmers level, uh, so as I told you, uh, we uh, did a survey with the, the farmers of the Beka. So the Beka Plain uh, is located in the Upper Litani River Basin. It's the biggest agricultural plain in Lebanon. And currently, uh, this uh, 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 place uh, is suffering from a big uh, pressure on water resources. Uh, we know uh, that many springs and rivers are completely dry in the summer. Uh, not mentioning the problem of uh, water quality and also that there's a big problem in groundwater dep depletion and the different aquifers uh, of the Beka Valley. So there is uh, a real need in improving water management. Uh, so uh, at the level of uh, farmers, uh, we wanted to know if there were any farmers using uh, ICT use, uh, ICT tools, uh, how farmers perceived uh, these tools, uh, did, did they think they needed to improve, to, to use them to improve their water management? Uh, and also, uh, more generally, uh, their access to information and communication channels. Uh, and um, in order to, to be as realistic as possible, uh, we wanted to cover different uh, types of governance and management, different types of water sources, technologies, uh, cropping pattern, farm size, and land tenure. So in the next slide, uh, I wanted to show you um, that uh, the goal was for us to cover um, as much as possible the diversity that exists in the Beka. So we based our study on a previous study that uh, we did with IMI concerning groundwater governance, uh, where we were able to unpack and differentiate between different uh, water users. Uh, so uh, in the Beka, we have uh, systems that are traditional spring-based, using canals by gravity. We also have uh, farmers using pumps, pumping from the rivers. Uh, and we also have a large uh, part that uh, use uh, private wells, either collective wells or, uh, or individual wells. Uh, so uh, we wanted to see uh, who really needs to reduce water consumptions and who has the incentives uh, to do so to be able to identify where it is more likely that, that farmers will be uh, interested in, in such tools and if they already are uh, um, using them now. So the methodology that was followed, uh, we chose to, uh, to take uh, three different uh, cases. Uh, so farmers from the Canal 900, which is managed by the state, by the Litani River Authority, uh, it's a pressurized uh, network, underground pi pipes. Uh, Anjal Irrigation System, it's a community uh, managed system by Anjal Municipality. It's a traditional one, uh, uh, water flows and open canals. Uh, and we have the private pumping, which is the, the farmers who use their own uh, wells, either individually or collectively. So we have, for example, three or four farmers 
that choose one well, generally one farmer sell water to the others. Uh, so this uh, differentiation, uh, it's first at the level of the technology is different. Uh, and uh, importantly, uh, the, the structure of the water tariff is different. So in Canal 900, they pay a flat price per denom uh, to the Litani River Authority and Anjar uh, the same. Uh, in case of private pumping, they, uh, they pay uh, for the energy cost of pumping. So it's incremental and it depends on the depth of the aquifer. The three different uh, systems also have this, this you know, differentiations in terms of, of uh, farm size and uh, in terms of uh, cropping pattern. But uh, to be quick, uh, I will go to the main results. So if you're interested in all these different uh, differences between the systems, you can check the report. Um, I will just show you um, the sample we, we have in terms of age and education. Uh, so most of the farmers uh, were found to be older than 50, uh, but also we have a young, a young generation of farmers. Uh, in terms of their education, uh, the farmers that are beyond 50 were found to have uh, basic education, uh, um, elementary school education, and the new generation were uh, mostly um, graduate, postgraduates, and we have a good uh, amount of agricultural engineers uh, in the young generation. Okay. And it's interesting to see here that uh, most agricultural engineers that, that we interviewed uh, were found to be managing uh, the large farms, uh, the, so the, the largest sized farms, and most of them were actually uh, employed uh, to, by, by landowners or by companies to be able to manage these la uh, large farms. Uh, in terms of access uh, to internet and technologies, uh, we found that uh, all farmers, most of the farmers, uh, regardless of their age and education system, used um, smartphones and were also subscribed to the internet, which was a good uh, uh, finding uh, if one wants to promote or, or encourage uh, the adoption of communication uh, tools. Uh, but uh, only 30% of the farmers used uh, a computer. So of course, these were the younger ones and the uh, better educated ones. Uh, now let's move to the, the water management and the correlation between farm size. Uh, so as you can see in this graph, um, the largest farms, those who are uh, more than 500 denomes, are all irrigated by, uh, mostly all irrigated by private wells. So it means that um, the concentration of water consumption uh, and of water pumping is concentrated in the large farms uh, uh, of the Beka. And these are the farms that are causing the, the aquifer to deplete mostly. And also there's a correlation between land tenure and the farm size. So uh, in Anjar, for example, the small farms uh, are uh, mostly under direct use. And the more the farms grow, the, the more uh, it becomes under uh, rental and indirect use. Uh, the irrigation techniques, so on-farm irrigation techniques, uh, we found that uh, more than 70% of the farmers use drip and sprinklers. So this is the case with uh, the pressurized uh, system, so in Canal 900 and in um, the private wells. And only in Anjar, 
where water is, uh, is uh, conveyed by gravity, farmers still use uh, furrow and flooding. Um, in terms of the decision making uh, and how farmers take their decisions for uh, when and how much to irrigate, uh, here we found that uh, the, the large majority of the farmers, they still use traditional knowledge uh, for, for irrigation, irrigating their farms. Uh, and only 50% uh, of the large farms, the large farmers, they used uh, scientific calculations. Uh, here, for example, we saw that in uh, a large famous winery in Kaftaya and another farm exporting iceberg lettuce, and both of these farms were managed by agricultural engineers. So these were the only two farms that, um, that we saw uh, the use of ICT. Um, next, uh, next uh, slide. Yes, so uh, this, is, this is actually the graph that represents the, that 90% rely on field observation and only 10% they actually calculate crop water requirement based on weather data uh, and, uh, and field uh, experiments. Uh, however, uh, all farmers were found to be very interested to check the weather forecast. Uh, all of them uh, used the weather forecast uh, that they watched the t television. Uh, and uh, one of them uh, in, uh, in uh, South Beka, he has his own weather station. Of course, it's a very large farm. Um, Concerning the Larry, uh, we found that it was used uh, for the general news and the general weather forecast, but uh, the farmers found that it didn't really give uh, the weather forecast and the backup. So it was too general for them. And we were going to see now uh, with uh, Dr. Ihab and Marie Therese that uh, it's because uh, it's, it's uh, not uh, linked to geospecific weather stations in the Beka. Um, when they were asked about uh, the problems they have and where they specifically need information, we saw that despite that, uh, uh, that water shortage is mentioned actually as, as a, a problem by more than 50% of the farmers, uh, but uh, that they, not a lot of farmers mentioned that they need to uh, understand better how to calculate the, the water requirements. So it wasn't mentioned explicitly as a need, uh, but farmers uh, mentioned uh, the, the problem of access to market and the general uh, agricultural problems in the sector uh, to, to be the real problem and uh, they said that uh, they they would like to have more information for example on market prices and uh, pr crop protection uh, recommendations and advices. In terms of their access to extension services um, we saw that uh, it was limited in the Beka, the access to, uh, to uh, extens extension services and support by, by external agencies. Um, and uh, we saw that mostly farmers concentrated in the uh, collective schemes like Canal 900 and Anjar had these types of assistance, but it was mostly in the, in the framework of uh, internationally funded projects cooperating with the public uh, agencies, while the people using private wells had little access to these recommendations and assistance. Uh, and finally, uh, we saw that, uh, as I told you, the ones who were uh, mostly uh, the, the, 
the agencies that were given mostly the extension services were uh, NGOs, but also the private firms who uh, are in contact with farmers to sell uh, phytosanitary products uh, or fertilizers. And this was uh, deplored by the farmers who who uh, don't see it as objective and, and scientific advice, but rather um, a strategy of, of sales. So uh, this is uh, this is in terms of extension services. Um, so the general conclusions uh, that that we can uh, have here. Uh, we can say here is that uh, ICT use and more generally uh, the scientific decisions uh, of, of the, that on that uh, farmers rely on to irrigate uh, are limited. Uh, but we found that large farmers were interested uh, to to invest and to have uh, more information. Uh, on how to better uh, schedule their irrigation and how to consume less water and uh, have a higher water productivity. Uh, so this passed on the slide, but I, I didn't really highlight it. So these were the large farms that are using the groundwater and uh, where they are feeling that aquifer are depleting and that they are paying higher and higher cost for pumping. So we found that here are the true incentives to, uh, to invest in, and, and promote ICT. Uh, and also um, we saw as a conclusion uh, that, uh, so if we introduce the ICT and water management, it will be likely more, most, more likely to be ab adopted by the large farms uh, and this will have a collective impact on the aquifer. So this will be not only positive for these farmers, but for the different farmers that are using the aquifer and also the, the farmers that are using water resources that are connected, connected to this aquifer. Because as we saw in our previous study on groundwater, that all the water resources are actually connected and um, it ha if we have uh, an impact on water sources that is likely to have an impact on the other interconnected water sources. Um, the governmental institutions, we saw that they are taking many initiatives and there is a very uh, strong capability and strong expertise, technical ex expertise, but there was a missing link between this expertise and the understanding of the diversity of water sources, water users, the different incentives uh, to make a real change in their practices. Uh, for the small and medium farmers, uh, we saw that there's a low incentive to use complex ICT tools and that simple solu solutions should be designed to help them. Uh, and incentives should be found in order to promote this use at their level. Um, this is why at the end uh, we saw that uh, the upgrade of LARI app, which is already used by farmers to check their weather forecast, uh, is a good tool that can be beneficial for both the small and the large farmers, uh, but that it should be upgraded in a way to give them more geospecific um, information and that this information on weather should be translated in concrete and a concrete uh, recommendation uh, to make uh, their irrigation in terms of schedules and quantities. So th this is why we chose at the end to uh, base our work on uh, this uh, existing uh, LARI application. Um, and uh, I want to conclude that uh, technology uh, is important and uh, if, if, it, so if it's targeted to real needs, it really can have good uh, impact. But we should not forget that uh, this is to be seen uh, within the more like global picture 
basically, notably at the level of the straightening or public institutions that are weak and that are uh, understaffed, um, strengthening the coordination uh, between these institutions and inside the institutions, and also that uh, the water management planning should uh, also be seen as a more integrated approach and that should be reflected upon uh, on, on major water allocation choices to be able to reach through water management. So I hope I was clear enough uh, and not too long. And I thank you for your uh, for listening. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Marie Helen. Uh, and please, if you have uh, any uh, question or uh, comments to um, Dr. Marie Helen, please uh, put it on uh, our writing or uh, keep it to the end when we'll have an opportunity for you to ask. So. Um, so that presentation highlights for us uh, the need for uh, ICT uh, tools and the potential uh, of use. Now we'll hear from uh, Dr. Ehab uh, Joma, the Director of Irrigation and Agrometeorology uh, Department at uh, LARI, uh, about the LARI uh, application. Dr. Ehab. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice to uh, meet you here, even online. It has been a long to uh, see most of you. Uh, I hope that you can see my uh, presentation. Yes, we do. Thanks. OK, uh, my presentation will uh, consider uh, only uh, LARI application uh, that uh, LARI has developed throughout the years and a uh, little history in order for us to enter into the new technology that uh, Marie-Hélène is insisting to uh, use it and introduce it in the, in the best way and the better way for the sake of the uh, humanity and uh, saving water and uh, water and uh, food security. First of all, the project has started in 2003-2008. Uh, it was the ADP project. Uh, EU funded project and uh, in this project uh, there was uh, uh, activity on uh, implementing uh, early warning system it was called an early warning system for uh, pests and diseases it was mainly concentrating on pests and diseases because uh, there was uh, models uh, existed uh, by that time uh, that they can use uh, directly climate data and generate uh, warnings uh, regarding several uh, diseases, pests and diseases. And this is why uh, it took uh, a very important uh, portion from this uh, uh, project, this kind of, uh, of early warning system, I would say, uh, from this project was a vast and a great project regarding several uh, activities, but uh, regarding early warning system, uh, pests and diseases was the most pointed off. Uh, of course, with the future thinking to develop uh, irrigation uh, technology or irrigation scheduling uh, to be better inserted into the early warning system of uh, LARI. By that time, uh, this project uh, has uh, implemented uh, and equipped LARI with almost 23 uh, weather automated weather stations, automated uh, stations that uh, they are uh, they were linked uh, automatically uh, uh, through GPRS system, through mobile system, uh, and it uh, it, uh, it was uh, managed by LARI in order to be included into uh, pests and diseases models. Of course, these 23 uh, weather stations were uh, distributed over the country to the places they, that uh, LARI had uh, access to. Uh, of course, not all the good locations uh, we have access to it. So even there are places where, uh, where they're not uh, perfectly uh, meant for uh, uh, warnings and the climate uh, gathering. Sometimes uh, stations are sitting in a place which is not very uh, uh, good uh, for their own sake of use. Uh, but anyway, because of the security reasons and several other reasons, uh, we had these uh, 23 
automated weather stations distributed over the country on the perfect places for that time being. Uh, and uh, they were collecting data since then. But uh, later on, uh, we, uh, uh, we have uh, introduced uh, from these stations uh, an SMS uh, system uh, to uh, farmers in all Lebanon, covering all Lebanon, and this SMS system by that date in 2008, uh, it, uh, it went on till 2015, but uh, the whole thing uh, came out to be very uh, costly and costly for the to be covered by uh, the institute. So we had uh, to uh, swap and change toward the newer technology and uh, app, uh, which is free of uh, charge. So now in 2015, uh, up to now, we have the Lari Lab uh, app uh, uh, being functioning, uh, of course, on a daily basis, as it was on the SMS, it was on also on a daily basis covering uh, several subjects. Uh, and uh, of course, in 2018, uh, our uh, 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 the who registered on the app was around 40,000 uh, people. Uh, I would say we don't know if they are farmers or not, but mostly they should have, uh, we should have to have farmers in them. But this is a free app and, and has also other information than only, uh, uh, only information for agriculture. And this is why uh, it's also uh, interesting for uh, other people whom they, they are not only farms. Uh, this is the distribution uh, of uh, weather stations in all uh, Lebanon. Uh, this is the network of uh, weather stations that it became uh, more than 60 weather stations uh, overall Lebanon from 2011 or 2008, the ending of the EU funded project till now. So we've been developing uh, in our weather stations over uh, the country and it's all uh, maintained by Larry, and also these weather stations, uh, uh, I would say 90% of these weather stations are from budget of uh, Larry. Others, they came from projects uh, of different projects that Larry uh, is involved in. Uh, these uh, weather stations for agrometeorological purposes, uh, it had, oh, it has many uh, sensors in it, and these sensors, they require maintenance and they require uh, several uh, cleaning, maintenance and calibration. And this is uh, maybe require some kind of cost uh, coverage and this cost coverage is it's, uh, maintained by Lari. Uh, and uh, it's through the budget of Lari. Nowadays, we, we are having some troubles, problems regarding uh, replacing some uh, uh, parts that uh, needs to be replaced on a regular basis in order to maintain these stations going uh, because of the budget cutting from the government and maybe uh, larger problems on the on the financement regarding the government uh, will uh, arise later on. But we are managing to maintain our weather stations functioning uh, as much as we can. Hopefully that we will uh, maintain these weather stations until we get uh, different technology that's uh, cheaper technology that we can uh, install and uh, work with. Uh, this uh, application had uh, uh, several uh, reasons. We had the, the weather forecasting that is mainly engaged uh, this application with, and it was sending on a daily basis uh, weather forecasting uh, data or information, uh, but this information comes to the farmer on a text-wise, but uh, we have it on a, a different uh, format, but we tend to send it on a text-wise in order for the majority of farmers to read it and not to hassle with numbers and uh, uh, shapes and everything. So maybe it's a reading, uh, it's easier. Maybe uh, later on we'll find something else to be inserted. Uh, these are different uh, information that we can have uh, for several days uh, uh, in the future, like I would say 10 more days, but of course each day is, 
it's updated each day for the next 10 days. So we can say like uh, each three days on the future, it could be more uh, accurate uh, for the three coming days at least. Uh, of course, we have different information comes on uh, on the uh, uh, forecasting issue. Of course, we have data that are uh, forecasted for the reason of uh, managing agriculture and uh, modeling uh, pests and diseases, but also data that could be used uh, for irrigation uh, purposes and scheduling irrigation, and this is what uh, we are intended to insert in the uh, update that uh, my colleague will uh, explain later. Uh, this is also another information that we could uh, have through our forecasting that we can set to farmers, uh, but this is just to show where are the uh, main or the, the hours during the day that can uh, farmers uh, have, uh, they can spray, they can irrigate uh, uh, through sprink sprinkler uh, irrigation, not to be uh, less uh, efficiency, less efficient uh, with, with wind. So uh, we can assure farmers where are the hours, when are the hours that can be uh, uh, good for agricultural practices, for certain agricultural practices at the farmer uh, level. These are the uh, uh, interest of uh, uh, farmers to enter or the users to enter into the uh, application. And we can use the different months. We have different users, different numbers of users. Uh, of course, during uh, uh, summer days, maybe there are different or smaller or no, uh, number of users will be less. During the beginning of the uh, fall, the beginning of spring, of uh, winter, uh, there are more users maybe because of the rain-fed agriculture that is uh, uh, focusing on when to uh, cultivate uh, the crops, the cereal crops. And this is mainly uh, farmers wanted to, to uh, listen and hear when is the perfect time to uh, cultivate uh, their crops before the uh, rainy season comes and uh, they can uh, manage not to uh, irrigate uh, their seeds uh, once they cultivated on a dry uh, range of days. So this is mainly maybe because of that. In uh, spring, February, March, uh, there are some more users comes in uh, because of the uh, flowering uh, stages where we uh, used to uh, warn uh, uh, for forests for uh, 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 for uh, freezing times uh, for uh, also we have at this moment we have more diseases and pests and diseases being monitored by Larry uh, on the ground also through traps but also of course through models by uh, climate in order to uh, warn farmers regarding pests and diseases uh, this is one example from the uh, app that was warning uh, for the 2014 uh, freezing time, the frost that uh, came in 2014 at this date of uh, last day of uh, March, where was the uh, heat waves before came uh, this uh, specific date. And because we had heat waves came before, uh, most of the fruits in central Bika at least uh, fruit and uh, fruits uh, in them, or almost not fruit, I mean flowers, flowering. So uh, they had uh, the budding, and uh, once they had the budding, they had a large uh, loss uh, in, in this date. And we have this warning, but of course, this warning to, needs to be uh, uh, also uh, coming with extension and more extensions, what to do on the ground once this uh, comes. This is a, a, an example of uh, these days uh, messages that goes to farmers. Of course, it is in Arabic and with some photos showing the disease and showing the insect and showing also what uh, they can do to uh, uh, to control these pests and diseases. Uh, one project before in 2013-14 came to us and uh, they wanted to do some assessment as uh, IUMI has done uh, their assessment on the ground with farmers and uh, what they have found that uh, farmers uh, regarding age 
uh, distribution who heard of Lari distrib uh, application. Now heard of Lari application, maybe use it, maybe not, but this is the result they came of it. Uh, uh, so uh, the main uh, majority of farmers heard of it uh, between 50 and 60 or age. This is because uh, Marie Ellen has said most of farmers, they are aged. So of course, this is, comes in, in line with uh, her result, but also how often farmers use the application monthly, weekly, daily, seasonally uh, regarding the crops, crop uh, size. So maybe uh, the cereal crops comes in daily, uh, the stone fruits comes in seasonally. So I don't know how, how uh, this is uh, interpreted for uh, every one of us, but uh, what we want uh, is to be used on a daily basis from all uh, kind of farmers. So of course we send uh, for fruit trees and they are more interested during the season of uh, the fruit trees. Uh, irrigation season, uh, most of them are interested during the irrigation season. This comes later on, but every season has its own uh, uh, fruiting or uh, season, crop season. This is why you have different uh, seasonality or usage uh, timing for farmers. Another uh, result came out how farmers uh, who uh, use the application uh, and also we had a website working uh, on forecasting. Uh, for weather, they uh, use it, most of the farmers, they use it for uh, weather and for pests and this is less, this is the result. Uh, how often farmers use the app, uh, this is how often uh, they use it on a daily basis, uh, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, it comes more uh, frequently used. Uh, how often farmers use the application on the, the crop, this is, uh, we went through it. Uh, now, uh, for the uh, current situation, uh, so Larry announces to farmers uh, different uh, for different reasons. Sometimes uh, to come and uh, pick up their uh, fee uh, or uh, uh, to pick up their wheat seed, for example, to have some kind of services. Uh, different announcements sometimes for uh, Larry itself, uh, for uh, the sake of Larry, to uh, ask people to come to Larry not only for farmers. Uh, also, early warning for pests and disease, this is uh, also strongly uh, present. Uh, weather forecasting is strongly present. Uh, extension advices for rain-fed agriculture and other systems, this is existed. And irrigation, we are hoping to have it uh, through the help of the uh, funded from EUMI, from Netherlands. And uh, with this uh, regard, uh, the coming uh, update uh, will be taken off by uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Maurice. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Hemp, for your uh, presentation and uh, taking us through the journey of uh, uh, Larry App. Uh, I think now it's the time after hearing from uh, Marie Helen about the need for ICT uh, application or use and uh, Dr. Ahab that took us through the uh, Larry Ab uh, journey and how it's been developed and used by uh, farmers for uh, different uh, type of uh, use. I think and now I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Marie Trace, the unit head for um, water and climate at Larry, which will make the connections between uh, Larry Ab as a ICT tool and also the Weber uh, database and the use for uh, irrigation. Dr. Marie Trace, please. Good afternoon. So first of all, I'm going to share my presentation. Okay, so I'm uh, going to present Larry work within the UMI Water Productivity Wapor project. So mainly Larry worked on component four, objective three, that is related to the use of ICT tools in agriculture. So the main objective is the Larry Lab application to include a, a module related to irrigation scheduling, 
in a way to be able to support farmers uh, to understand when, when and how much water to apply to their crops. So for this purpose, we had mainly to work on two different parts. First of all, we had to select the appropriate evapotranspiration product uh, to be used for this upgrade process. And in a second part, we had to design and to develop all the calculation steps behind this app. So in a first phase, we mainly considered the Beka Valley as a pilot area. And we started to work with three main crops, wheat, potato, and table grape. Of course, later on, we will be able to include a whole list of crops to the app. So let's start to explore a little bit what we did concerning the first part that is related to the selection of the appropriate evapotranspiration product. As you know, evapotranspiration is the most impor important component of irrigation scheduling. So mainly in this study, we tried to test three different methodologies for the special mapping and calculation of evapotranspiration. So we mainly tried to use uh, our data, let's say from our local uh, weather network, LARI weather network. We tried also to use two open access remote sensing products uh, that are EE flux or earth engine evapotranspiration flux developed by the University of Nebraska and um, Oh, so this uh, product mainly operates on Google Engine uh, and is based on Landsat images. And we tried also to use the Vapor, uh, let's say the FAO portal for water productivity, uh, in a way to map ETO. Here I would like to mention that Validating which method is the most or the best performing in terms of evapotranspiration mapping was conducted on the basis of ETO or reference evapotranspiration and not of ET, assuming that if a product is valid for ETO, that means that it is also valid for ET. The main reasons of drivers were the following. We all know that validating ET is complex. In addition to that, ETO and ET have common intermediate data. So mainly, if an approach is valid for one, it must be also valid for the other component. And we all know that both ETO and ET uh, are used for irrigation scheduling, particularly for extracting the crop coefficient, mapping it in a way to be able to extract extrapolate and get updated ET maps at frequent uh, time basis. So let's start to explore a little bit the three different approaches that we followed in a way to select the best performing approach to be used to upgrade LARI app. So here I would like also to mention that the time frame uh, which we use to run this study was last season irrigation period. So mainly April to July 2019, we started, we started by considering the data of April because uh, it, it, uh, it consists with the beginning of irrigation season of winter crops in the Bekaman. So concerning the three approaches, starting with Larry Weather Network, from the different stations that we have in the Beka Valley, mainly 19 weather stations, we extracted daily climatic data that we processed using the FAO aqua crop, crop water productivity model in a way to get the reference evapotranspiration. After that, the data was processed in GIS software in order to, to do the special interpolation. interpolation. And as output, we got the maps of ETO that uh, we, we could elaborate at different time scales, daily basis, weekly, monthly, and so on. 
So here I'd like to show you uh, the location of our weather stations, of Lari weather stations in the Beka Valley, as well as uh, the respective names and geographical coordinates. And here we have examples of generated ETO maps that were elaborated on a weekly basis. In this figure, we have examples of ETO maps that were elaborated at daily basis. Now, concerning the second approach that we followed to map ETO, we mainly extracted data from the remote sensory open access database EEFLUX, and the data was processed in GIS in a way to resample clip for the BK and so on, and get ETO maps at eight days in total, which correspond to the time travel of Landsat uh, satellite. So here we have, uh, I, I would like to show you the, this portal, the EEFLUX portal. As you can see, mainly Lebanon is covered with two Landsat images that we have to stitch and to clip for the BK. Here we have examples of ETMO maps that were produced from this database. For example, we have a map generated for April and another one generated for 13 of July. Now for the third approach, so we mainly used WAPOR. We extracted uh, the daily ETO data from WAPOR portal, FAO portal, and the uh, data was processed in GIS in a way to get ETO maps. So this is the WAPOR portal. Examples of ETO maps that were produced from WAPOR. Now, uh, what I can tell you is that adopting the first approach, so mainly uh, mapping ETO through LARI weather network, is time is time time consuming and stuff consuming. So that's why we had to think to adopt a remote sensing product, because uh, with those products we can get um, a fast output. So that's why we thought to validate EEFLUX and WAPOR by comparing those two remote sensing products to the ground-based uh, ETO maps that we got from LARI Weather Network. And for this validation approach, we mainly tried to map the mean bias error in terms of percentage area of the car valley bias between minus one and one millimeter per day, which is considered as an acceptable range, and also by finding the range of mean values of MBE for selected days. And uh, this is a way to understand which software or which product will uh, be used to uh, upgrade Larina. As a result, we got the following. So mainly with the EE flux, the percentage area of BK that presented a mean bias error between minus one and one millimeter per day ranged between 45 and 94%. And on the right, you can see a map showing uh, the MBE estimation for the BK Valley. I'll when we used WAPOR, this percentage was between 50 to 98 percent. Now, concerning the range of MBE value, uh, let's say of mean values of MBE, so with EE flux, with EE flux, it was between minus 1.2 to 0 0.85 while with WAPOR, it was between minus 0 0.95 to 1.5 millimeter per day. So as you see, maybe both uh, products performed in a good way with a slight, uh, let's say, a slightly better uh, performance of WAPOR than in flux. So in 
tunnel, considering different criteria, uh, such as the validity in terms of mean bias error in respect to Larry stations, the start time requirements, or even the time basis of output product, we uh, concluded that Wapor will be selected to upgrade Larry Lab. So we continued the second part of our work using WAPOR. Now, let me uh, describe a little bit what we did for the second part. So how we designed the irrigation module in Narina. So what is behind the app? Of course, the main actor behind the app is WAPOR software, from which uh, we are mainly going to get rain data, evapotranspiration data, in a, way, in a way to process them in GIS and get the maps of the net irrigation requirements for the Beka Valley in terms of millimeter per day. I will show you some examples of maps that we elaborated from WAPOR. Here we have ET maps, so um, evapotranspiration maps that we elaborated during WAPOR. Here we have rain map from Wapor and the elaborated net irrigation requirement map. And I can tell you that this type of map will be used in the interface of Larry app uh, to help farmers in irrigation scheduling. So mainly the farmer will have access to a map giving the net irrigation requirement. However, this information doesn't tell a lot to farmers. So if we are going to tell farmer, OK, you have to, to irrigate four millimeter per day, this is nothing for him. He will understand nothing. So that's why we need to convert this net irrigation amount into a gross irrigation amount in terms of how much cubic meter per water per day per, dom per donum the farmer is uh, or has to, to provide his feed, his crop. So for this purpose, we had to develop different tables providing the gross irrigation requirement to a wide range of net irrigation requirements for, for different combinations of crops and irrigation systems considering other factors such as the wetted area, the, the efficiency of irrigation system, and so on. Uh, behind the app is a series of tables providing those gross irrigation requirements. Let's say, for example, if we are going to include, to include 10 crops in the app, so for those 10 crops, we will have around 30 tables providing gross irrigation requirements. An example of, the, of those tables that we elaborated given here, of course, the farmer, those tables, or let's say the, the main output of those tables is translated in Arabic uh, to be included in the app. Now, let me uh, explain a little bit how the app will operate. So first of all, the farmer will have access to the map of the net irrigation requirement in which he's going to locate in his field. So he has mainly to detect the color of his field. For example, let's say that the farmer is, the farmer field is in the purple color or in the blue color. After that, he has to select a crop and irrigation method that he is using and the app is going to provide him a value, one value of cross irrigation requirement in terms of cubic meter per day per dollar. So the, fa the farmer can stop here. Otherwise, he can insert to the app some few additional information in order to get more information related to the, to the duration of irrigation um, operation in terms of hour per day per farmer's field. So he has mainly to give the app information related to the field size, 
so the distance between water emitters, distance between rows of emitters, and of course the water emitter flow. Uh, and finally, he can get also indicative information related to the frequency of irrigation. So as you see, this app is designed in, in a way to be interactive with the farmer. Uh, so now I'm going to show you a little bit uh, how the app will look like, so mainly the interface of the app. And I'm going to present an example related to the sprinkler irrigated wheat. The farmer is going to open Larry Lab irrigation module. He will have access to the net irrigation requirement map, as shown here. So here he has to locate in which color is his field. As you see, it is written in, Ara in Arabic. حدد لون حقلك المزروع على الخريطة تري النبات بحسب ألوان الخريطة. So let's say that the farmer is in the purple color. After that, he has to select a crop. Here we are going to select wheat. Then after, he has to select the, up the irrigation method he's using. So mainly, let's... Uh, deal with sprinkler irrigation, sprinkler irrigated wheat. After that, the app will show him a table including the same colors as those shown on the map. So this table contains the amount of gross irrigation requirements for different ranges of net irrigation requirements. So if the farmer if the farmer saw that his field is in the purple color, that means that he has to irrigate 4.3 cubic meter of water per denim per day. So he can stop here. If he wants to get more information related to irrigation duration, he has to copy this or to insert this value of 4.3 cubic meter here. So, أدخل هنا كمية الري بحسب لون حقلك على الجدول. After that, he has to enter his field size. In my example, I will consider that the field size is one denim. Then the app will ask him to enter information related to the flow of the sprinkler or dripper he's using. In our case, we all know that Let's say most of the farmers in the Beka Valley use impact sprinklers to irrigate winter crops, and those sprinklers have an average flow of one cubic meter per hour. That means 1,000 liter per hour. So here I will enter in my example 1,000 liter per hour. After that, um, the app is asking what is the distance between the sprinklers or water emitters. In this case, I took 12 meters. And the distance between lateral lines. In our case, in my example, I inserted 18 meters. And it also asks to select an indicative range of soil type. And its output, it will tell the farmer that he has to, he has four emitters in his field, and the irrigation duration is one, around, let's say, one hour per day per field. So in case this farmer is going to irrigate each four days, he has to apply four hours of irrigation. So this is mainly how this app will look like. Of course, it is still a preliminary version. We are going to improve more and more later on. As conclusion, so this work is a first attempt to develop an irrigation module in Lari Lab. This work will be continued in a way to, let's say, to be able to update the net irrigation requirement very frequently, for example, each three days. In addition to that, we will try to include a module related to the crop health in terms of primary production. So 
So how much gram of biomass per square meter the farmer is going to obtain day after day? We are going to include more crops. Mm -hmm. We will also try in the, in the future to add forecasted irrigation requirements for the next few days and to extrapolate this work to cover not only the Bekaa Valley, but also the whole Lebanon. And finally, it is highly needed to start working very soon on field testing, probably with some selected uh, community of farmers and crops. Thank you. And stay tuned for the app launching. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Marie, for uh, that uh, interesting and uh, uh, high level presentation. Really, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, where it actually show us the, the, the link between the, um, the Weber and Larry and also the, the user. And um, uh, for everyone not, so this just like, uh, as Dr. Marie said, this is just uh, like a, a beta version to collect your uh, feedback. Uh, so please, uh, if you have uh, feedback or questions, uh, share with us. Uh, there will be an email follow up uh, from this uh, workshop. Uh, we'll send to you by Marie Helen, where she will ask uh, uh, about your uh, feedback. So in terms of uh, questions, I have here um, one question from Karim. Uh, so I will read it through. But please, if you have a question, uh, feel free also to unmute uh, yourself and uh, uh, ask your question. So I will uh, just uh, ask Karim to unmute himself and ask his uh, question, please. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, Karim. Yeah. Good. Um, well, first of all, thanks to all for the interesting presentations. And then I was wondering, with the, in relation to Marie Therese's uh, presentation, what are the expected water savings that you will achieve with, you know, with this? I mean, there seems to be quite a lot of uncertainty going through the process from the interpretation of the data that exists until it reaches the farmer. So I was wondering what the expectations are in terms of percentages or volumes or something like that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Karim, for your question. Let's say uh, on the basis of our experience uh, and our previous works in the Beka Valley with farmers, yes, we expect to have water savings um, related to uh, the use of appropriate irrigation scheduling. But of course, uh, it ha let's say we have to do field testing in order to confirm uh, our expectations. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Mary. Uh, any other question? Uh, probably I will go around the participants uh, one by one. So from the alphabetic list here I have, uh, Eli Shoury, do you have any question? You need to unmute yourself. Okay, so I take this as uh, no question and then move to uh, Eli uh, Harfouche. Yeah, thank you for this interesting uh, patient. I have uh, uh, to, to that two, two questions. Uh, first, Regarding the uh, need assessment of the presentation made uh, with the stakeholders and uh, the analysis, uh, why only focusing on big and not uh, also for Akka to have uh, some data for Akka? That's only because the waiver data is available for Akka. This is one. Uh, another issue is uh, um, regarding the data on uh, accessing extension services. We uh, we we saw that it's very uh, 
the, the, the percentage, for example, provided by Mouba and blood is very uh, weak, I mean, uh, very low. Uh, it is low as uh, um, uh, from Lari or Bois, comparative to the this, this is understandable in a way. But, uh, well, it was presented that as that was the SMS and the application, uh, was that taken into consideration as an extension as well? Uh, I think uh, this, this is, this is the, the issue. Another, uh, another issue. It's a bit uh, maybe more uh, more not not within the framework of this workshop. But uh, but you know that FAO is currently implementing and since several years implementing water related. So I would appreciate, please, if possible, from you, me, and Larry. We know that we have several ways with Larry, several connections uh, and cooperation. So uh, uh, because I, I saw that, for example, for the stakeholders assessment analysis, how governance was not be good or enough involved in order to follow and to check what's happening because you know that we we need and it's very important and we are interested in benefiting for our water productivity project uh, this i mean uh, to, to accompany it not from power so it, it, this is this is just because i, I know that we are keen uh, that uh, our projects benefit as well, partners of our projects benefit as well, and we can, I mean, have more synergy and complementarity between our projects, uh, including, I mean, how it's shown. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Eli. Uh, I would like to invite Marie Therese to answer uh, the question. Maybe uh, Marie Elaine has to answer <laughs> the question. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the first one was about the, the analysis and why only Beka Valley. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, may I interfere? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, hello. Ah. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Dr. Ihab. Yes, uh, thanks, Eli, for your uh, questions uh, regarding uh, why it's only in the Bika. Uh, it uh, would be extended to uh, uh, Akkar area and to all Lebanon. Actually, it's not uh, it's not something that is um, concentrated here and there. But uh, because to uh, baby Marie Therese will uh, also. Uh, explain more on that but in order for us to concentrate and to know what are the weaknesses and strengths and using this or that technology uh, and following uh, on the ground with farmers it's better to concentrate on a specific area maybe and the most important agriculture area is the Bika in Lebanon but of course every other place in Lebanon will be included on the app because uh, remote sensing as you know is not limited in a portion, it's uh, it uh, provides uh, data every uh, on every uh, place in the country. So of course it will be included later on. Another thing you mentioned, maybe if I heard well, because your voice was cutting not very well, but uh, you asked if the extension surface was included and uh, how which it will be included or why it's not included. Maybe I didn't get the answer the questions well. But uh, I believe this application, uh, it should start at the uh, research base uh, at the beginning, as it is starting right now. And we have to have the, the final answer for the extension service, for the Ministry of Agriculture, which way to go. And it's our duty uh, to uh, provide the extension service with the best result. 
and this is why we are working here. And of course, uh, uh, the extension service will be included uh, after on on the uh, on the uh, trainings and uh, capacity building on this issue, of course. But we need to test it well and uh, make it well here. And uh, this part to be part from Lari as extension or to go to the extension service. This comes later on, maybe to arrange for another policy for another. Uh, the law arrangement in order maybe to implement it inside LARI because LARI is holding the whole network of weather stations and the uh, technology and uh, the know-how expertise uh, within LARI and maybe later on it, it would be included the service into LARI as a main service from LARI to farmers and why not because LARI is Lebanese institution is not the other planet institution and also uh, extension service is also a Lebanese institution and whoever can provide the service is fine. That's all what I want to say. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Can I add one more thing? Sure, please go ahead. Uh, yes, um, so um, just I want to say that uh, we started this work uh, to conduct, let's say, the study in the Beka Valley as a pilot area because there we have a good coverage of weather stations. So it was easy for us to conduct the first part related to uh, the validation of the remote sensing product that we are going to use. This is, uh, so it's a better area than others. And uh, now, since we have, let's say, we validated WAPOR, we can now start to extrapolate uh, this approach to other regions. So the next region, I think, will be the will be Akkar Plain. Uh, so our aim is to have an application that can be used in any agricultural area in Lebanon. So our aim is to cover the whole Lebanon. And as I had mentioned, uh, at a first attempt. We have to have. We need to have a good research basis to start with. After that, will come the work with the extension service and uh, things like that. So after launching this app. Thanks, Marie. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I would like to give a quick uh, comments here and uh, confirming what uh, Dr. Hal and Dr. Marie Therese have uh, said. Uh, so the idea was really to do this uh, pilot as a proof of concept and uh, also have that uh, validation for the tool that can actually be uh, used. So we call this actually as a phase one and uh, uh, we start actually to discuss phase two where we'll include, uh, of course, uh, more crops and uh, more areas. So uh, I think your uh, feedback at this stage, it's uh, very uh, valuable and it will help us uh, in shaping phase two uh, with Larry as well. Um, thank you, Dr. Amgad. Uh, can I just uh, also uh, add uh, a few things? Uh, yeah. Maybe some things were not answered. Uh, Dr. Uh, Eli, uh, first for the needs assessment, um, the third part of your question, I think you, you were uh, wondering uh, if we had uh, coordinated with FAO, but I wasn't really uh, uh, um, hearing you well. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to say that in the first year uh, when we did this survey with organizations and farmers, we actually uh, went uh, and met with FAO Lebanon, uh, with uh, Dr. Maurice Saade, and at that time with uh, Dr. Antoun Makaroun, and they gave us their uh, feedback on our uh, questionnaires and they also uh, gave us uh, uh, several contacts. Uh, so they were in involved in the beginning. Uh, the needs assessment, however, was not a very long study. Uh, we had a small fund and uh, uh, we decided to do it also in the Beka, the first part of the study, uh, because Imi had experience uh, in this uh, area. And we already had uh, uh, mapped the different water users uh, in Central Beka in a previous study. So we decided to build on this knowledge uh, in order to target uh, specific water users 
um, that that might have the incentives uh, to to use uh, the ICT tools and also to to make interesting crossings between the different categories of users uh, and uh, the relevance of, of promoting the uh, an increase in water productivity and technologies. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Mary. Sorry, uh, for the extension, I, I think that also Dr. Shwaili was interested in, in the, the, the degree, the small degree of uh, uh, extension services, the small level of extension services uh, that were found in the survey. Uh, it, it's indeed uh, true. Uh, farmers mentioned that they are rarely in contact with public institutions including Ministry of Agriculture and uh, LARI, but uh, this is not including uh, their access to LARI app. So it's not, uh, in this diagram, it's not uh, included as an extension service. I hope it's clear now. Yeah. Thanks, Mary Helen. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Eli. Uh, I think we have a question also from uh, Betty Farah. So can I invite you, Betty, to ask your question, please? You need uh, yes, hello. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. I'm just uh, wondering, uh, since you are doing this application and you are taking uh, user input regarding uh, to calculate uh, how much water he, he will use for his uh, farm, it is. Uh, it will be interesting if we can uh, store this information for later use. Uh, maybe this was my question. Uh, it's not a question. This may be a proposal or uh, a comment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, maybe I will uh, answer Patty uh, if uh, you allow me, Dr. Amkan. Yeah, sure. uh, Marie Therese maybe will comment later if I have something, I missed something. I think it's better to concentrate on the irrigation purpose uh, of the application uh, to store the uh, data that comes from farmer. It's very interesting and it's uh, thoughtful for the sake of uh, statistics. Uh, maybe uh, it would be included if it's really needed on the basis of irrigation uh, data or irrigation uh, knowledge for us uh, in order to, to deeply understand what farmers have. But I don't think up to now the information that we are asking the farmers to enter is uh, of that much of an interest. Uh, but only uh, the uh, location itself, if the farmer sits in, in the place that he is in, the, in his farm, maybe. But other than that, uh, I don't see any uh, information. It's highly, highly important to, uh, to save it. Maybe Marie Therese can, can interfere also. Um, I agree with what you said. Um, it's okay. I have nothing to add. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can clarify that. So the, the app actually present the information to the farmer about how much water they need to use to irrigate. But this doesn't mean actually the farmer will apply the same amount. Uh, the farmers can apply more or less based on his uh, expertise. So we will provide this information to help him in his uh, decision. Yeah, so just to clarify the difference uh, here. 